motorcyclist. Now, remember, accident implies that there's an unforeseen event that occurs without fault or negligence, so we can't be saying we got into an accident if we get into a crash. So we're going to talk about some responsibilities to prevent us from getting into a crash, and I want to say thank you real quick to Indian Motorcycle for allowing me to play around with this Indian Chief 2022 for this ride. So right now we're riding with the DDFM crew out here with motorcycle training concepts and having a great time practicing our smart rider principles and giving out tips is one of those things. So let's go ahead and get into it. There's the exit. All right. So number one, you got to be visible. Okay. So that's why I like to wear high visual type gear. I don't like wearing the green stuff. I like to wear white, especially on the head. I think that all my helmets are going to be white from now on because that is the big bobblehead looking thing and that's what you should be doing too. Now if you want black, that's perfectly fine, but just remember we're trying to mitigate as many different factors as possible and if we keep hearing about people crashing and getting into close calls because I didn't see you, you know, sorry mate, didn't see you there or whatever that is, Smidzy over there in the UK. Uh, the goal is to be as visible as possible. Now. Being visible is not just about what you wear, it's about also being visible on the bike. So the best way you could possibly do that is to plan your ride, position yourself for safety, and you need to have the greatest vision. So when we plan for safety, we're, we're gonna be over here. You know, if there's cars in front of us, we can see ahead. We're gonna locate hazards, adapt to hazards, navigate those hazards. And then now we're gonna get past our own vision. How do we become visible to other drivers consistently is by doing what we're supposed to be doing anyways, okay? So if the law says you can't lane filter, one of the best ways to be seen is to not lane filter because if you're lane filtering, nobody expects that. Also, nobody really expects motorcycles anyways, so being right behind the vehicle in front of you is no bueno. That's why you want that space cushion part of planning your ride. And then also you want to present yourself in front of intersections. So just do like a nice little wave. You know, you see how I'm in still in lane position one. You know, we're staggered, you know, so we're visible all together. But present yourself before intersections because intersections are extremely dangerous for motorcyclists. So that's what you need to do. Oh, I forgot to have it on this thing. Thank you, Indian Motorcycle. Pretty cool. All right, so let's move on to number two. So communicate your intentions. One of the greatest things about being in a group is actually get to communicate with each other. So I got my Cardo Pack Talk bold right here. They got Cardos back there. I turned it off so they don't have to hear me talk like a little weirdo. But right here, we got an intersection. So I'm gonna communicate my intentions. I got my indicators on well ahead of time for the people behind me. But this is a very dangerous road. So we're gonna go back to being visible. I'm gonna go ahead and double check. I'm gonna use my vision also. So I'm gonna tell everybody, cause I'm communicating my intentions. This is a blind crest of the hill. And there we go, just double checking. And we're gonna go ahead and do that. That was a decreasing radius, all right. So we got everybody behind us. We all have intentions. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my indicator. There we are. But that's part of it. So use your signals, use your brake lights. Make sure you're in the proper lane position to be seen and, and to communicate what you're wanting to do, okay? So when you get to a stop sign or stop light or whatever, if you just engine brake, your lights don't turn on. So what I like to do is when I'm downshifting and I'm giving myself that total stopping distance that is needed, I'll do a little tippity tap tap of the brakes and it's almost like a modulating brake light. And that's really important because it grabs their attention, okay? So part of being invisible again is lighting too. So here's the thing, if you do your brake lights like that's gonna help out with people seeing you because vision, lights, that grabs the attention of your eyeballs. It grabs the attention of other people's eyeballs. So that's very important. All right, so let's go ahead and just move on to the next one. I'm in sixth gear. I don't know why, let's go back to fifth. <laughs> So maintain an adequate space cushion. So right now we are in this staggered formation. We are two seconds between me and Nathan behind me and then Rainin behind me is four seconds. That is the appropriate space cushion. Now every so often he's gonna come up next to me for some cool shots, but we are doing it in a safe environment as possible. Another thing is you wanna be focusing on the car drivers ahead. Now that's the biggest thing. We talk about commuting all the time on this and having a great time, is that the car drivers ahead of you, you need to have a good total stopping distance. Now, total stopping distance is your perception reaction. Braking equals total stopping distance. On Dan and the Fireman, we talk about people not utilizing good total stopping distance, and then therefore, they try to make up for it with as quick braking as possible, and that is when you get into that panic brake mode and not utilizing progressive brake pressure. Now, we are not having anybody <laughs> in front of us, so that's a good thing, but in town, 
that's something you really got to watch out for okay so when you are lane sharing same thing good thing with the total stopping distance and then also when you're passing okay so when, with the adequate space cushion on passing you want to be able to stay away from people you don't want to be too close you get the wind blast and then when you get in front of them you don't want to cut them off because then they're panic braking and anyways you just want to maintain a good 360 situation awareness and a 360 space cushion all right one thing that you want to do is search your path to travel 12 seconds now right here we got a blind turn coming up so that's not gonna be 12 seconds that's about eight seconds and this is all i got but your goal is 12 seconds now seconds and time is is kind of relative to your speed all right everyone here watched the snyder cut and saw the flash do his thing in reverse time by going way too fast well here's the thing you can get close to uh being right on zero seconds one second whatever if you go way too fast your reaction time is terrible and the thing is how do you increase the time before you get to something well that right there is by slowing down so if you have to slow it down to where you're going to be able to make this turn with a 12 second lead time now right here obviously you can't do 12 seconds but now that you slow down before the turn, guess what that sounds like? Slow look, press and roll, you're doing a great job, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we're gonna go ahead and talk about the last thing. Now identify and separate hazards, okay? You have to be prepared to act. You have to remain alert and know how to carry out proper crash avoidance skills. Now I have this little thing right here, I memorized it, I type it 20,000 times, I had to refine it. And I teach it all the time on Dana and the Fireman, so it's, I'm not reading it, it's just keep me on the bullet points because I get distracted. So the thing is, <laughs> you got to plan your ride. So I talked about at the beginning, positioning for safety, locating hazards. That's what we're going to talk about right here. We got left turners. I'm going to present myself, communicate my intentions. I'm going to go ahead and be visible. There we go. Grab their attention because my headlights bobbing left and right and forth and everything. All right. Now we got to maintain the adequate space because you see how we're putting everything together. But planning your ride. I'm sorry. I talked too fast position for safety so maintain a good space cushion always have an escape route so that's part of it and then also position yourself for safety in terms of vision so right now i'm off to the side of this vehicle i could see super far past it but if i was in lane position two all i could see is the back end of that so, okay now locate the hazards this is what we really want to talk about we're going to adapt the hazards and navigate threats and that's what we're going to talk about too but locating hazards what is pertinent right now nothing in front of me is going to hurt me other than maybe a road hazard i got a good space cushion i'm not too concerned about that vehicle up ahead because i'm maintaining a good space cushion and i'm looking for those brake lights i'm looking for it getting bigger and bigger and bigger in my vision that means it's getting closer that means i'm getting closer and closer so that is what i'm concerned about with yeah 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 how come nobody cleaned up i can smell it nobody cleaned up the tacos from yesterday Ay, 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 ay. Come on, guys. Rookies, come clean this up. Hey, so everybody, real quick, we're going to be going over the Patreon gear giveaway winners today. So if you're brand new to this, we do have a gear giveaway going on. But uh, we're slowly going to move that away from Patreon. And I'm kind of getting tired of it. We're going to be moving it away to the Motorcycle Training Concepts website pretty soon. But in the meantime, that's kind of what it is. Okay, $800 worth of Revzilla gift cards. You can still sign up on Patreon. We'll let you know, you know, if you're on Patreon versus uh, the MTC website. Still entered to win. Okay, still entered to win. But uh, let's get the class. Let's go ahead and uh, have a nice little chitty chat chat. Get going on this. We got a lot to do today. So we're going to get some of the busy stuff done. And then we're going to hang out for a little bit and talk about some crashes. Because, whew, there's some crazy crashes going on. I know, I know. Craziness. Once again, I forgot to get some nasal spray. Oh, yeah. I get congested. I get congested if I talk a lot. I just keep talking, I get congested. So, making sure, making sure things are doing well. All right. Just double checking things here. All right. All right. It's not that, Jim. It's not that. So this is what we got right here. This is what we got right here. We have uh, gear giveaway winners, you know, or uh, we're going to be announcing them pretty dang soon. So we got uh, 21126 going on. That's how many entries we have. And once again, okay, third place, $150 Revzilla gift card. Second place. $250 Revzilla gift card. And then first place, it's going to be 
a $400 Revzilla gift card. Woo-wee! Can't wait to see it. Can't wait to do it. That's what we're going to be doing. All right. So let's go ahead and do it real quick. Let's just make it happen. One, one, two, six. That's what we got right there. And boom. So the result is $53.95 over there on the right. So this is for third place. So $53.95. Now there's like some, some blank spots. So if we see, if it lands on that, we'll, uh, we'll double check and fix that. So $53.95. Right? Alan Hall. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste that. That's a tier zero. Hey, Alan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Third place, $53.95. Hey, that's a $150 Revzilla gift card. Ooh, yeah. Uh, how do you donate money to your program? So for, for uh, April and May, we're raising money for the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. So if you want to donate to me, I would, I would rather you donate to, to this charity during these two months. So I turned off donations. I turned off donations for me because I would rather all that money that you have that you can donate to go straight to the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. But I appreciate it. You know, donate in my name if you really want to. Donate in my name if you want to. Which, by the way, we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the donations that we currently have, and so far, no new ones today. I will shout you out if we get some donations. All right, so this is going to be for uh, second place. And the reason why I do this, go ahead and generate it. The reason why I do it live is because I want you guys to know that I'm not making these things up. Now, you don't have to be live to, to enter or live to get it. So, uh, 14, 7, 11. Um, I will send you an email, 14, come on, come on, 7-Eleven, hey, Burgundy, I know you're in here, dude, I know you're in here, Burgundy, where you at, you gotta be in here, you're always in here, where you at, where you at? Did I get a new donation? Matei, Matei! Woo! I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> With a $2 donation, appreciate it. <laughs> hey, Burgundy, I know you're in here somewhere. I know you're going to watch it. You always watch it. <laughs> you went to the suit store with Brick? Ah, okay. Yeah, he loves Lamp. He loves Lamp. I know he's in here. I'll send him an email. He, he's, a, he's a regular. That's a $250 Revzilla gift card. Now, the way it works is that if you don't answer the email within 48 to 72 hours, I think it's 72 hours. Uh, I do have it. It's, it. I have a template and everything. If you don't, uh, I pick another winner. Uh, I pick another winner. Uh, just not on stream. I, I emailed the second winner. So I actually had to do that last time, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is for first place now. Let's go ahead and generate this. Because we gotta get we gotta get the class. 14, 1, 3, 4. It's close. 14, 14, 1, 3, 4. 14, 1, 3, 4. And Dominic King. Dominic King. And also a tier zero. I will be sending you an email real soon. Let's go ahead and get out of that. Let's go ahead and put this down here. I will be sending you an email real soon, uh, probably right after the stream, if not tomorrow. That way uh, we can get these things settled. Now, what happens, I just, I just get your email, uh, Michael White, and uh, what I do is I just send you an e-gift card. It's, so it's super quick, no messing around, and it goes straight into your email, and then you're able to just buy whatever you want. $400 Revzilla gift card for first place, $250 for second, and then we got a $150 for third. We're hoping to do more. Uh, so once we have it situated on Motorcycle Training Concepts, by the way, everybody, let's see, Motorcycle Training Concepts, boom. 
Once we have it situated on motorcycle training concepts, we're going to have a membership area for the DDFM crew. We're going to have uh, our own DDFM crew area, okay? And that's going to be the giveaway, and it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. And it's, it's the way to, to enter on here. And then with uh, motorcycle training concepts, we can, you know, we're going to add a forums and everything. So it's going to allow us to give you guys some special things outside of just being a part of the, uh, the giveaway. You know, I want you guys to actually have some more things, all right? Wrong message. I copied the wrong one. Anyways, I said I wanted to be a higher tier member, but I want to get credit for chewing them cables. Congrats on 300K. Mate, mate. Woo. But yeah, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be playing around with this one. We're going to be playing around. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we actually, we're, we're working on that third product, so I got to change that up so it looks a little bit better. But we're working on that third product, which is going to be, guys, we're, we're getting the rescue card situated. We're getting the rescue card. So you, uh, we're going to sell them uh, one a piece, and then we're also going to sell them in a pack of 10. So you can buy a pack of 10 at a discount compared to what they are. It's, it's better for shipping, too, by the way. And uh, that way you can give them to your riding buddies so they know what to do in case you crash. So we're going to do packs of 10. Let me know. Do you guys, do you guys want to get, do you guys want some of these? Like, you know, do you want like more than one? Especially if they're cheap enough. Let's say a pack of 10 for, hmm, pack of 10 for $20 plus shipping. What do you think? I'm just trying to make it work. Just trying to make it work. Oh, yeah, the beard. I know I need to make it work. I need to change it up. <laughs> yeah, we're going to... If that's the case, we're going to order a whole bunch more. We're going to order a whole bunch more. Guys, we're going to get started once we get 200 likes. Come on, there's 180 of you in here, 190 of you in here, and only 78 likes. We're going to get started. What am I hydrating with? Ah, just a Mountain Dew. Just some Diet Mountain Dew. 15 bucks for 10 of them? I think it, I think it costs more than... Anyways. Whew. I should get it braided. Ooh, a vinyl wrap with rescue on it? Nice, Chris. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to get started real soon. Domo, yeah, 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 yeah. Soaking up the mental aspect. 106 likes. Come on, we got some new members, right? New members, come with me to the lounge. All right, All right members, come on. We got to clean. <sighs> I can still smell it. Got to make it look nicer in here. Guys, what we're doing here is we're going to be going over some situational awareness training. We're going to be talking about some patterns. We're going to be talking about what to do in a lot of these situations. And if there's going to be a medical review, we're going to go ahead and talk about that. Which, by the way, I believe, I believe we can go ahead and uh, take a look at a video. Uh, there's a medical video. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what's on here. Maybe I'll just do it in after action review off camera or off live You know, at, at my own house. But uh, make sure you guys hit that join button, hit that like button. We're going to get started once we hit 200 likes. There's 200 of you in here. Remember to sign in for class, which is the like button. You get credit for today's class. And uh, let's, just get, let's just get back in. Let's just get started pretty soon. Come on. Come on, guys. Sign in. Just sign in. Just sign in. It's not that hard to do. It's not that hard to do. And, and rookies, can you guys clean up? Can you guys clean up the, the crew lounge? It's it's getting a little crazy. It's getting a little crazy. <sighs> Come on now. Come on now. I need party kid, I do. I need to get I need to get some I need to braid it. I need to braid it. So uh Dem Demitrosi Rondell, first stream been able to catch since I got into your channel. Hey man, good to have you here. I will cry, Scarlet. I will. I will. Hey, is it all clean? Hey, did you clean it? All right, let's check. check. Did, you, did you clean it? Hey! Honorary member status to Aya. Woo! 
Let's, we gotta get. Thank you for cleaning it up. It looks beautiful. It looks nice. You guys can play some foosball if you want. You know, whatever. Hi, right, go have some fun. Hey, good job. Thank you. Thank you for cleaning it. Don't chew the cables. It's getting frustrating. It's getting real frustrating. Dog and French, we're going through them. We're going through them. Trust me, we're going through all of them. We actually have quite a bit. You guys want to see real quick? Let's go ahead and go up to here. I want to show you guys. How do I eat soup with that? I get, oh, uh, cereal, soup, all those things. It just gets dribble, dribble, dribble. Look at all these. These are these are like just insane. Just so many. Just so many. I think we talked about this one. But we got like this one right here. Top of my head, look. Right here. You got a cat on your head. Can put pressure here? This, this right here is going to be a medical review. Put pressure here? Yeah. My arm got tired. Yeah, don't put too much pressure if it's an open... Just hold his head on. That's good enough. That's good enough. Holding C-spine. Wonder what the, the incident was. Oh, that's blood. Chin reveal at 500,000? Yep. That's why you wear PPE. Now you got grassy, bloody hands. What do you think might have happened there? Wet road. Yeah, so we got a whole bunch to go through. We got a whole bunch to go through. Trust me. Trust me. Yeah, it's not. It's a no bueno. The good thing he is actually uh, conscious and alert, so that's a good thing. It's a good thing. So we we got a, we got fifty, sixty, eighty, hundred user submitted videos to go through. Once we have a whole bunch, we might we we might not even need Moto Stars anymore. And that's the that's what I want to do. That's what I want to get at. All right. He said the car swerved into them. Oh, George. Hey, you know I might need. Yeah, 70 more people, guys. We got to sign in. Sign in. Click that like button. We get credit for today's class. Make sure you guys sign in right there. Look at this. Woo. Dan Stars. I don't know. We might. Uh, Cornell, do I recommend airbag vests? Yeah, I, li I like it. I like the Elite more now. The more I look at it, the more, you know, the, the gyroscopic, you know, G-forces, and it, it goes off when, when it recognizes a, a sudden change. It's like... I prefer the mechanical now. I keep hearing stories about it not going off on low sides. So it's like, you know, just get the Helite where it's that mechanical cord. So if you do fall off, it pulls it. And another good thing about that is that it's basically just a CO2 cartridge. So you can deflate it. You know, uh, you could test it out if you wanted to. So there's a whole situation around it. I don't know too much about it in terms of uh, the product itself. Um, but from what I heard from secondhand reports and anecdotal reports that the Helite is actually pretty good compared to the others. Uh, yeah, repack it yourself. Yeah. Cause you have to send in the other one, Chris, right? You got to send in the, the Alpine stars and it's like 200 bucks to send it in. Uh, when am I going to get one? I think once, um, once I start riding more and more and more, I'll probably just get one. I haven't been able to ride too much. Did I ever get seriously hurt? No. Fortnite review says says so for what? 150 people signed in. Make sure you guys sign in, everybody. We're gonna get started once you guys completely sign in. So long as it uh, it's done in a way where it doesn't promote your poor behavior for clout points, like we blame Moto. <laughs> yeah, I know. So yeah, it's gonna be on brand where it's gonna be uh, very short. You know, it's going to show the incident very short, 20-second AAR, and it moves on, you know? Um, I'm not going to let things run. You know, right now, these videos are, what, 10 minutes? Like, almost 11 minutes. Mine will be, like, 8 minutes. Just just barely 8 minutes. You know, it's, it's like what YouTube likes around the 8-minute mark. 
Uh, that way, though, it's like maybe five to six crashes in close calls with some uh, AAR to it. So it's very quick. I got a whole, I got a whole show planned in my head. <laughs> Don't worry. I got, I, I got like a 20 to 30 minute show. So while we're waiting for people to sign in, while we're waiting for people to sign in, guys, remember 200 likes. We'll get started in 200 likes. You got to sign in for class. Come on. Yep. You got to sign in for class. So usually we hang out in my dorm room before class, but I had some other things to take care of and I barely made it to work. So thank you, Scarlett. Appreciate it, Scarlett, for uh, getting everything prepped and ready. Appreciate it. Angel, whew, thank you for the coffee. Getting me energized. You got my, my Mountain Dew, too. Kind of weird combination, but you know what? It works. Appreciate it, Angel. Nightbot, you're doing great. Nightbot, you're doing great. Hey, Raynan, how you doing? Thank you for uh, being in charge of the AV, the audiovisual. You're looking good. I can't trust these rookies no more. You guys are doing great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Area code, where you at? Where, 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 where are you running to? Where, you keep going back and forth. And I know those rookies are crazy. Woo. Kelly day to day? Nah. Nah, I'm glad I don't do these four days no more. Usually Kelly days are Wednesdays. We're on Thursday right now, so we're, we're good. Gator, I know where you is. I know. <laughs> good to have you here as an, another fireman another firefighter uh hey would you say that a sure ron in a suburban city would be safer than a motorcycle a sir ron uh, might be a are you talking like a car uh i gauged that by the fact that he said steering wheel gesture with jerk motion oh, okay yeah i do need a, I do need that 182 likes. We're almost there. We're almost there. We got to sign in, guys. Sign in to class. Uh, since you can go in bike lanes while st still wearing gear and keeping up in traffic. I must, I must have misread what you said, Ishak. I think I said it right. A Suron is an electric dirt bike. Oh. Shows you how much I know. Dude. I think that's part of today's video. I think that's part of today's video. This thing is hauling ass in the video. This thing goes fast. Incredible battery. Incredible. Awesome engineering. Man, this marketing is insane. So it's talking about suspension. Where is it talking about the the brakes? I want to know what the brakes are. <laughs> like if they're good. So what I, I have a feeling this is what's in this video. I kind of skimmed it just to double check because I've been like not skimming them and it's been like pretty bad. Watch this. Is this a Suron? Is this what you're talking about? Not this one right here, but coming up after this one. This that's a Suron. Look at this dude. Look at this dude. That dude is hauling booty. Is that a Suron? I don't know. Probably like 60. No, I'm joking. He's probably doing like 40, 50, I think. Look at this guy. <laughs> what is that thing? Come on. 200 likes, guys. We're going to start when we get 200 likes. Oh, look at that. that thing is what is that? Yours is fast, <laughs> I wonder what the brakes are on that thing. What the hell? <laughs> That's not a Suron. And you can't even finish it. If you're like, I'm telling you what, that dude's doing 40 50. He, he doesn't have a full face helmet. It's a proper electric dirt bike. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I want this thing. <laughs> but going 40 or 50, look at this. There's no regulations. There's no regulations on helmets. There's no regulations on what you need to wear. This dude is not wearing the proper gear. We're going to talk about that real soon. Uh, once we get 200 people to sign into class. Dude, I would love to have one of those. 
I would love to have one of those. I mean, it's going to be lighter weight. Uh, you go to work. Or like, it would be the perfect commuting bike. Hussein, hey, welcome to the, welcome, welcome to the crew, baby. Woo! Come sit down. Go ahead and sit right there. Go ahead and sign in real quick. 200 people signed in. All right, we got to get going. We got to get going. We got to get going. You got to refresh it, Matei, Matei. Got to refresh it. We got 204 people liked. Woo! There we go. We're going to talk about this Moto Stars video. Whoa. Ooh, that road is terrible, but he made it. How dangerous Look how wide he went. Conditions completely covered with gravel can be. Uh oh, gravel issue. Okay, a little squiggle line. Road surface hazards. Be very careful. You don't just haul. Oh, got a little bit. Oh, low sided. So there's a traction loss when it comes to. Uh, oh, that one's going to be interesting. So just take a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just take a look at the environment you're in. So remember when we were out riding, it's not about just it's not just about our skills. We might be the best rider that we know. You know, we're really damn good. Like we're really good with cornering. We've been practicing, 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 and we're doing amazing. We're always doing really, really well. You know, we're the best we possibly can be at right now at this moment. What is what does the road look like though? Like this right here is what's gonna make it to where you're going to have a bad day. You know, the sun could be making a bad day. Rain could be causing problems. Other vehicles could be causing problems. Another motorcycle is going crazy. Lots of deer, whatever it is. But look at the road. So remember, ride within the conditions present, not what your skill level is. Your skill level should always be the best, should always be better than what the environment you're in, because that means you can maximize whatever environment you're in. And right now, this environment is saying, hey, you need, to, you need to take it a little bit lower, though. This reduced your total max skill that you are able to use. You might have more skill than, than what's needed here, but this road, look at that. It's a bad road, so don't push it so hard. This bike I very quickly learned how dangerous a road in such a con So we're a little bit wide on that spot, too, so just kind of check yourself a little bit. Completely covered with gravel can be... So that, that sign said, you know, the squiggles. Please. Let's take a look at the squiggle sign. It said 30 miles per hour. So let's say it's like a 45. It's like, mm, maybe I should take it a little bit easy. Line of sight issues. The road is kind of terrible. All these different factors coming together can produce an accident or crash. So be very careful with that. So the best way we can do is change our speed. That's one factor. We can also pick the best line of sight. And the best line that will provide that, that's another factor we can possibly reduce. So the more we have control over, the more factors we have control over and we can reduce and eliminate, the better we're going to be because the environment itself just gave you a whole bunch of them. We can't reduce those yet. You know, we don't, we're not God. We can't change the road the way it looks instantly. Uh, we can only change what we can do. So we're going to be going over here. We're going to go a little bit over here, and let's see what this says, actually. So 55 to 30, right? So it said basically 25 miles an hour less. Hit some gravel. Hits a lot more gravel. That was a loss of attraction. Now, we're in a position of, oh, crap, we're kind of screwed. Now, what can we do if we crash? Well, hopefully we have full gear. Hopefully we have a uh, good gear so that we can minimize and mitigate as much potential injury to ourselves. But once if we have no service out here? Think about that too. If you're out riding in the mountains by yourself or you're out riding some crazy place by yourself, do you have service at all points? Because if something bad happens, what are you going to do? How are you going to rescue yourself? That's another thing you got to be thinking about too. Whew. So not much we could do in this situation other than basically crash. And that's why we need to have a helmet. That's why we need to have uh, full gear just in case. All right. So we're riding around, doing some wheelies in a mob ride. Hey, we're having a ton of fun. Big red truck with a camera guy. Okay, so they're part of the group, it seems like. Okay. 
Uh, decent. Whoa, somebody crashed, somebody crashed, somebody crashed, somebody crashed. Avoid, avoid, avoid. Good job, Lucas. I don't think you're a part of the group ride, but you're, you're a crew member here. Good job on everybody swerving. Let's see what this rider looks like. Are they damaged? Now, we'll talk a little bit more about this. Okay, opening the back. Oh. Is it locked? You, you, can, you can open... <laughs> Open the door! Open the door! Open the door! Um, another thing is we we have a sticker blocking part of that. I mean, it's HZ. You know, I think anybody can figure that out. Um, it's interesting, though. Hey, good camera. All right. So, anyways, let's go back a little bit. <laughs> let me in! Let me in! <laughs> so, anyways, uh... I don't want to see anybody hurt. So I want to just make this a point right now. I don't want to see anybody hurt. I don't care what you guys do to, to an extent. I, you do what you want to do. We're all on two wheels here, maybe on a Riker, you know, maybe you know, Can-Am, three wheels, whatever. You know, you wear you three-wheeler. I don't care. Either way, we're on motorcycles. We should all be taking care of each other. doesn't matter what we're doing. If you're going to run wide in a corner and hit, hit vehicles, or you're going to, you know, do some wheelies and, and or you run wide because you're you're racing uh you do wheelies and you crash you're in a big group ride you know you're riding with quality whatever the heck it is whatever it is uh akuma uh the main thing here let's get my head out of the way the main thing here is i want people to be okay i want people to be okay so if you crash i want there to be somebody or i want somebody there to take care of you that's what I'm trying to get at. So when I see people in the back of a truck, I hope and I wish these people would be medically trained. I hope there's somebody or a group of people that go stunt, but have that inclination of, you know what, I want maybe I want to learn medical and trauma uh, care. I want, to, I want to know how to take care of somebody that crashes. I love to stunt. I love stunning, but I see so many people getting hurt. I want to get that training. You know, because I'm still going to stunt with them. I'm still going to ride with them. They're still my bros. I, but I want to get the training. So I want those people to be a part of the crew. Because at the end of the day, the goal that we have here is to make sure people can get home. That's all I care about. I don't care if you stunt. I don't care if you race. You know, you put yourself, you have your own consequences. You hurt somebody. You have to deal with that yourself. I prefer if you didn't, but... You know, I'll take care of you if you crash. I'll take care of that person if you hit them. I'll take care of anybody here. I'm going to encourage you not to do it. High risk, low reward in my eyes. But I want you to take care of yourselves. So I want people in this right here to take care of them. I want them to have... And I was playing around with my, my own rescue kit. I was playing around with my own rescue kit. I want them to be able to do that. So let me know if you're a stunter, if you're a road racer... If you can, if you're wanting to help in, in terms of learning how to take care of an injured rider, okay? So we're riding around here, having some fun. Now the person up front, take a quick look. So right over here, boop, this person's going to crash, so they failed the wheelie. Now that's typical in a lot of these group rides. Now what do we do? How are we going to rescue this rider if we're part of this group? And he landed it, and there is going to be the crash. Now, that truck slammed the brakes. Hopefully, nobody falls out, so they did okay. And there's a lot of damage. Now, this rider right here, not wearing full gear. Now, once again, to be a smart rider, you need to have acquire and utilize personal protective equipment. But if you don't, it doesn't mean you're, like, an idiot. It just means you're not following the principles that the DDFM crew has set forth for themselves. You don't have to be part of the DDFM crew to be a rider. Uh, these are just a set of principles that, that I want uh, the crew to be a part of. Now, you could be a rescuer. That's cool. So if you can rescue another rider, that's what I care about in this situation. I can't get everybody to wear gear. I can't get everybody to be situationally aware. I can't get everybody to not do these things. What I can hopefully get is people to have the training to save another person's life. Also, I want you guys to know how to open up a tailgate because this is ridiculous. All right, moving on. Here we go. Here is another situation where the not entirely favorable conditions of the road doesn't forgive any mistakes. New asphalt, what are we doing? You can handle a little bit, tire spin. Oh, just gave it. 
Ay, ay, ay. Okay. All right. All right. What happened there, everybody? Lost of traction on that rear tire? Yep. Now, why? I think he did his own after action review with a little bit of gravel, maybe a little bit of the paint on the lines, and that's a pretty powerful bike. So maybe also he's not using a uh, not using a rock form, he's using a ram mount, so that's probably the cause too. You know, rock form mount. Woo! Links in the description. Exactly. He's using a, a, a ram mount. Alright, so the gravel pit looks like a great spot to turn around. With a with a zero and a and a O. Another situation where the not entirely favorable conditions of the road doesn't. So gravel area, so lots of gravel, and we're in the middle of a turn. Uh, you can handle a little tire spin. Give her some throttle. Too much rear, uh, too much throttle, too much spin of that rear tire with low traction. Lost traction and. Turned into a high side, thankfully at a little bit low of speed. So moral of the story, don't ignore road conditions just because you think you know what will happen. So that's what I like about this rider. He did a good after action review uh, on himself when he's learning from it. And he's going to showcase this to everybody here so that we can learn from it too. So the main thing here is that we're doing a U-turn, very good on the U-turn uh, in a not so safe area. But, you know, no cars are coming, so it's as safe as possible. And then we're also going to, uh, the problem now is that we're going to try to go fast. So in the middle of the turn, we accelerate really hard, get some tire spin on some gravel. You can see the gravel and it's not going to have the traction needed. So it's going to spin even more, lose traction. We start to salt, uh, slide down It gains traction, flips us over. Whew. Uh, would you have been fine if he was going slower? Dem, dem. Yeah. Slower until you, until you get into the road. So right here, take it nice and easy. So we're doing this U-turn. We're going in and we're coming out this way and this is where he accelerates to go on to the road. Now what I would do is I would do my U-turn and your goal is to make it on here. You guys should be able to do that. That's pretty easy. Um, but maybe he was doing it because possible traffic so it's being as safe as possible planning his ride. But let's say we go in here so go nice and easy as upright as possible as upright as possible as upright as possible. Look, 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 look. Nobody's coming. Nobody's coming. Go nice and easy. If nobody's coming, what's the rush, right, uh, De Minister? What's the rush? And then we accelerate and we go. So if nobody's coming, there's no rush. So why are we accelerating so hard? It's probably because Steve Merritt joined the motorcycle gear giveaway. Woo! No, it, we were, we're just rushing because we're having a ton of fun with the throttle. So we just have to be alert. We have to be aware of what we're doing, okay? So that's what would have happened. That's what I want you guys to do if you just maintain a nice easy movement on the side until you get on road that you know for a fact doesn't have a crazy amount of gravel oh ryan i this beard does not itch no 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 it feels good Woo. see no cars are coming there was no rush to get going so don't do that look at the gravel just too much And get a ram mount. I'm just kidding. Get a rock form mount. Jeez. Anyways, moving on. We're riding, we're riding. Having some fun. Doing some wheelies. Woo! Went a little bit too far. Oh, I'll, all I can see is that gas tank. Whoa. That gas tank landing on his right leg. You guys see that? Let's do it one more time. Um, do I really like the Voss helmet? I have an Arai and want something new. If you can afford... Hey, guys. We Voss... Voss uh, is an affiliate here. It doesn't mean I promote them consistently. If you can afford something more than, than $200, I, I would get like a Shoei uh, or an Arai. So if you're, you're looking more at three, dollars $400 at that point, go ahead and get one of those. If, if you're a brand new rider and you have a limited budget and the max you could pretty much spend is like $200, $250 and, and you have all the features you need, get yourself a Voss. Uh, I like them. I like them for what they are. I definitely do. Uh, but yeah, your Arai was $900. Yeah. My, my show, you was like $600, but you can get the, the, R, uh, the R1400. Uh, so you can get, uh, some pretty good stuff, but yeah, I, I, I do like Voss. I do like Voss for what they are. You get a lot for the money. All right. So here we go. So we're going to be riding around. We're going to be riding around, riding around, riding around, and we're going to do a wheelie. Woo. So when we do this wheelie, we start to fail. The dude over there on the far right is like, whoa. 
we start to fail. Now, this is the problem I have with stunting is not the failure of these high risk maneuvers is that we don't have full gear. We're not wearing gear. So, so high risk and we're not mitigating some of that risk by utilizing gear just in case we do crash is going to open us up to lots of injuries, lots of injuries. So my biggest fear on this one is we plant our feet. So he's going to plant his foot and we're traveling. And if your foot gains traction, you could easily snap your ankle or tib fib, midline femur, or not midline femur, midline uh, tib fib. Now, you see how the bike uh, Ukami is, is coming down on his leg? So that right there is, is, is what I was trying to say when it comes to, ouch, look at his right leg. You know, the bike came down. That's what I was worried about when I first saw this, because I think of mechanism of injury. This mechanism of injury right here, easily a bruised bone, easily, easily a contusion in the muscle and the calf and the soleus, easily. Now, to let's go further than that, you can, you can have a tearing of the flesh, so you could have a really bad venous bleed or maybe even arterial bleed, but then a compound fracture, a, a massive fracture to that tib fib, just, just right there. This right here is, is why I wear high calf or mid calf boots not because i wheelie and fail but because if the bike ever lands on me so just take a look at this if you're just now jumping in does this look like maybe a low side you don't know if it was a a wheelie fail this could be a low side and your leg got underneath accidentally so this is that's why that's why i wear gear now when you see something like this and they're not wearing gear crunch sliding across the ground not wearing full gear, his shoe is gone on his right foot, tumbling, and then it's just kind of done. And we're off to the next video. So you got to be very, very, very careful when it comes to these things because it's, it could be the end of your leg. Okay? So be very careful. Whoa, 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 real quick. Whoa, we got a donation. We are getting a lot of donations. Just one second, everybody. Matei Matei, already donated. Appreciate it, bro. Michael White. My dad died from prostate cancer. I want everyone to be aware it is important to get a PSA test with a $510 donation. $510 donation. Wow. I truly, truly, truly appreciate that donation, and it's going to a great cause. We're at $5,500 raised. Holy crap. I think that might have been the largest donation. That is the largest donation we've had uh, this year. Wow. Woo wee. It's all for a good cause. Appreciate it. Also, Jim Verloop. With a five and Martin with a 1560. Thank you so much. Appreciate everything. Thomas entering the gear giveaway. Whew. This is a huge donation, everybody. Absolutely insane. It's going for a great cause. Oh, I clicked the wrong button. I meant to click the, the DGR button. There you go. So if you want to donate to the DGR, click that link right there. Let's go ahead and get rid of the, the gear giveaway. We don't need that right now. There we go. Here we go. Yeah, just watch the tip fib. Snap. Done. Moving on. Here we go. We're riding around having a good time. We're blurring out our speedo. We're doing good. Whoa, got a little kind of close to the edge there. Went a little bit wide. A little close call going on. This one looks interesting. All right, so what's the total? Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Boom. 510 right there. Lots of people. We got, a, got the, the team going. Looking good. Looking good. You guys are doing an insanely good job. We got $5,500 raised. All right, here we go. We're riding, riding through here. 
So we're riding around now. Take a quick look at, at the line that we're in. So when I talk about riding middle, middle, middle in the mountains, Aya, uh, Aya uh, when I talk about doing that, is because I want to plan my ride a little bit better. So when we plan our ride, I'm going to use this. Let's, let's not do that. Let's use what we have. Let's go back just a little bit. Not that far. <laughs> All right. So right here, let's take a look at this line. So what I do is I like to stay in lane position too. Now, why do I do that? Because we're planning a ride. And part of planning a ride is setting ourselves up for success. I don't know why I keep saying that wrong. Setting ourselves up for success by positioning ourselves for safety. That is what I care about. So if we're in lane position two, how do we position ourselves for safety then? So positioning ourselves for safety is gonna have uh, the best space cushion to the left, and then also the best space cushion to the right, okay? So if we're in lane position three, we don't have a big space cushion, we have a big one going over here, okay? Uh, if we're in lane position one, we don't have a good space cushion to the left, and we have an amazing one to the right, okay? That's fine. Okay, great. So if you had to swerve to the right, amazing job. Now, why do tennis players always return to the center? Because you don't know where the ball is going to go next. You don't know if they're going to hit it right or hit it left. So you always return to center because that's the easiest way to get to the next position. So when I see something like this, I'm always going to return to center. I'm going to return to lane position two because if I have to, if something comes out at me in lane position three, I can easily move away from it. If something comes at me from lane position one, I can move away from it. If something comes at me from lane position two, I can move left or right and I can move away from it. But if I'm in lane position three and something is right here, I'm going to have to move around that thing as quick as possible or move a little bit away from it. Okay? Not, not too bad. But if I was in lane position two, if something came up to me right there, right here, I could just easily move over here and never have to dodge anything. So I'm always going to be in lane position two when the goal is to plan our ride and to be as safe as possible. So position for safety is going to give you the best space cushion. Now line of sight, I want to make sure I have a good line of sight. The best line of sight for this position would be lane position three. But once again, we have that issue of the space cushion. Now we kind of mentioned it real quick on lane position one, two, and three for position for safety, also escape routes. So if we're looking for line of sight, space cushion, and escape routes, we have escape routes to the right and the left if we're in lane position two. If we are in lane position three, we only have escape to the left. Okay, if we're in lane position one, we have escape to the right and the left, unless the vehicles over here are the problem, then all we can do is escape right. So I just want multiple options when it comes to this. So when we get up to here, and we're riding, we're riding, we just cut ourselves off from line of sight and space cushion. We don't have a space cushion. I want that space cushion. So I'm going to be off over here a little bit more. So then I can have, if I'm over here, I can have this space cushion versus being right here where I'm at and I only have this. I don't want that. So I want the best space cushion, best line of sight, best escape routes. And this doesn't offer that much. So I don't like the outside, inside, outside. Personally, you do what you need to do. I like middle, middle, middle. For this reason right here. We almost went wide because we're trying to dodge somebody that could possibly be in our way. The driver coming from the wrong side of the road and minor misunderstanding with the biker was what led to this situation. Bro! Everybody, hey, 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 everybody. He's doing it. He's doing it. So, uh, calm, calm. Stop. Everybody, calm down. Jesus. Oh, shit. He's got a weapon. He's got a weapon. Kill me. Stop. Hey, hey, hey. You nearly killed me, and then she's. Can stick out a boot. How many times things nearly happen? Do you know how many It's called dangerous driving. Okay. It's called dangerous. Okay. So, from what I understand, these people. Stop. 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 Do it again. Stop. She just hit his bike. I hurt you, mate. So get off me. I know. I'm so trying going, to stop you from getting in trouble. I'm calling the police now. Right. Stop. 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 Oh. I want to hear what Motostars had to say. You know, in fact, I want to see what 
So outskirts rider. Crackheads. <laughs> Look at the crackheads attack driver after driving on wrong side of road edit. Edited as people were complaining on another channel, the comments were turned off. You you edited it to where this is the beginning. What is she doing? Do it! Do it, woman! Get in your car and fuck off! Hit me with it and I'll break your arm! Bro! I'd be defending my wife too. Look at this Hey, 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 everybody. Fucking swing it! Fucking swing it! So, calm, calm. Stop. Everybody calm down. Jesus. Yeah, he sounds American. The audio went out. Stop, you nearly stop, fucking killed stop, me. Stop. Stop. Hey, hey, hey. You nearly killed me and then she's putting a fucking stick out of boot. It's called dangerous driving. Okay. It's called you are not step back. I don't know what the context is. Bike Lunatics channel, there's a detailed explanation as much as possible as police said I can interfere with their events. You know what? Renzi, if you're watching this, skip this whole thing. Completely useless to showcase. Oh, Raul! What? Stop. Raul. Burrito. Borito. Yeah, it's it's useless. Let's not even let's not even give this any time. What? Stop. All right, moving on. All right, so we're we're riding around, having some fun. Yeah, it looks a little hazy out. Nice, easy ride. Big open lane for us. What do you think's gonna happen here? We're giving a good space cushion. Their maneuvers. What the heck are we watching? Moto Stars, this is is this just like non issue day? What the heck? I don't get it. What does Motostars have to say? Up next, we have a couple crazy situations in which the drivers are risking a lot with their maneuvers. Risking a lot with their maneuvers. Okay. We're in lane position one. So where were they are with that? Okay, so yeah, look at that. We're sharing a lane. We're sharing a lane now. So I could see that. I could see that. I could see how that would be a little pucker factor. Uh, let's take a quick look, though. Let's take a quick look at the situation. This is where we are. Good space cushion. We're doing pretty good. So great space cushion. Up next. We are. We can see pretty far. We have good escape pass here and there. We're in lane position one. Okay, we're doing really well. A couple crazy situations in which the drivers are risking a lot with their maneuvers. Yeah, he's risking a lot. Risking a lot. Now we're going to pause it as soon as we can. Now, I have a feeling... This person's just not paying attention, which is typical, and it sucks. You know, I, I wish I wish they wouldn't do that, but take a let's just try to figure out why. We have all these vehicles stopping or slowing down quite a bit. Big open lane, okay? They're just gonna do that. Okay, simple as that. Close call, yes. Could we do anything different? No. 
Now, you guys have to remember, class, you have to remember, uh, when it comes to being on the road, you're not guaranteed safety. You're just not. Car drivers hit car drivers all the time. And a lot of times, it might be just an accident or it's just the wrong place, wrong time. Could be debris, could just be just, just terrible luck on everything. And that could easily happen to you. You could be doing everything perfect. This rider did everything I would have done. I would have not done anything differently. No. no. But if somebody hits me, I have full gear. I have a tourniquet. I have my rescue kit. I've been practicing, 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 making sure I know how to do it. I know how to stop the bleeding. I know how to do all these different things. I can call off of my Cardo Pack Talk Bold that we have here uh, at the DDFM crew, a discount in the description. We have that to where I can do these things hands-free. I can do everything I possibly can. Sometimes you just can't control it. You can't, you can't control it. Did a good job. Handled it. Didn't get angry. Moved on. All right, we're riding around Lucky Wheelie. Okay. Oh, we got a little bit of power wheelie on that one. What are we doing here? Whoa, good swerve. Hey, good job with the braking and then swerving. All right, Moto Stars, it's okay. Moto Stars, you're doing fine now. Okay, good, good video here. Okay, this one was a little weird, but you know it's a close call. You know we can deal with it. So it looks like we're doing a little power wheelie here. So just look at look at where we are. Up and down. Okay, a little power wheelie. All right, and it's kind of his name. You know, Lucky Wheelie. All right, so what's happening here? Let's go and take a look. All right, so we got a person turning left in front of us. That left turner side of the vehicle, Lucky Wheelie recognized that pattern and applied progressive brake pressure to slow himself down or herself down, you know, the rider down, slowed the rider down. And here's the thing, if we're going too fast, our total stopping distance is only this right here. Now, do we have to stop in time? No, we just have to slow down enough to allow the vehicle to get out of our path of travel. Now, here's the vehicle right here. The little wheels, the little wheels, the little front, and the little caboose. So now it's over there. Looks like a little Fez hat. All right, so that's all we have to do is make sure that they get around us. So he's gonna slow down, slow down, slow down, and then it was able to move lane positions searching for that escape route. There's that escape route. We've gotta aim for it, right? Got to aim for it. You don't look at the hazard. Don't stare here. Stare where you want to go. Stare where you want to go. Okay? Did a good job. I want to showcase it one more time. So saw the vehicle, perceived, reacted with good progressive brake pressure, recognized, wasn't going to stop in time, searched for that escape path, went towards that escape path with an adaptation, just a quick little maneuver over and then went towards that escape path. Not once stared at the incident, not once focused and, and went towards it, went towards where he needed to go. That's what we're doing here, watch this. Good job. No panic, no panic. Did good. Are we riding around on, on uh, Harleys? On some cruisers, having some fun. Riding around, riding around. Whoa, uncommon thing. That guy was in our lane for a quick second. Oh, wear gear though, dude. 360 cameras aren't cheap. That's about $400 for a 360 camera. It's about $400 for a 360 camera. I I, yeah, 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 you know, just buy a helmet. Just buy a helmet. You know, you know, you know. My helmet. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's just this is what I'm I don't know. Just my helmet. Alright, so we're moving on. So we're riding around right here. And we recognize an uncommon thing in a common situation where we have headlights in our lane facing us. Whoa! Gut reaction gonna go into orange stage right over there, specifically identified an interest or a threat. Perceived it, ready to act. All right? That's the thing that we're going to be working on. We're going over here. And it's like, okay, they're back in their lane. Good. 
So if they weren't back in their lane just yet, what could we do? Boop, 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 doo, doo. Adapted. Part of planning our ride is position for safety. Okay, we're in a good position because we're in a staggered formation. Very good. I like it. And this is why we located a hazard. Oh, oh, orange state. We're gonna we're, orange stage. We're gonna we located now since we located it really far ahead and we're staggered. Right. We could easily adjust and adapt by moving over to the next lane position, not swerving. That's navigating a threat. We could just move over a little bit to give them that space because we're trying to get ourselves another good position for safety. And that is involving a space cushion. Okay. And this is the escape route. We're doing good so far. We're doing really good. Now the part here now i get it we got a helmet for our loved one on the back but it's just a half helmet that's not going to protect your face not going to protect your airway not going to protect too much it's a brain bucket it's just going to hold your brain after you crash so wear gear i'm glad he's got uh, eye protection because last thing you want to do is get uh, anything in your eyeball at 40 50 60 70 miles an hour even 20 10 miles an hour you don't want anything in your eyeball just a little poke in your eyeball that sucks Imagine a bug or a rock going in there. So good job. Uh, I don't know if they're antsy, uh, but anyways, I would wear full gear though, full gear. A 360 camera, come on, it's, it's at least minimum $200, minimum $200. And you could buy a, a, a helmet for $200, a Voss helmet for $200, easily. I wanna be one area code. I wanna do, I wanna do that. I had an idea for the, wow, for the Cardos that way. All right, bad lane position. Woo! Escape. There you go. Why do you think that happened? Why do you think that happened, everybody? Class, what do you think that happened? Ah, they didn't see ya. Why do you think it didn't happen? Or, uh, didn't see him? Didn't happen, it did happen. All right, so what I'm talking about here, you know, speeding kills only posted speed limits. Uh, very interesting, very interesting. It does kill, so don't be speeding like a crazy weirdo. All right, so what I was talking about lane position, when we talk about planning a ride, I keep bringing that up because it is the acronym I want you to use. Is it an acronym? Plan, what's the other one? A mnemonic? 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 I think mnemonic is... Something a little bit different. I think it's an acronym. Something like that. Anyways, planning a ride. Position for safety. We need good space cushions. That's what that is. That's not a good space cushion. We need good line of sight. That's not good line of sight. Escape paths. Hey, we got some escape paths to the left and right. Okay. I like to set myself up for success by positioning myself for safety. So what I would like to do is be off of here or off of here. Now, why would I want to do that? Let's go ahead and make it a little bit easier. I'm going to position myself off to the sides so I can see around the vehicles. So good line of sight. And then also it's a good position, uh, or I'm sorry, it's a good space cushion because this is where the space cushion goes. I mean, like in front of the car. I can go into a lane filtering position and if I had to, I can lane filter while trying to pro uh, progressively apply brake pressure. So line of sight, we have good space cushion. And now what's the escape path? We have a great escape path. Just lane filter again. So that is what I like. That is what I like. Pneumatic. Oh, it's a pneumatic phrase. Okay. Because <sighs> you have to say it with air. That makes sense. So when I'm seeing this, can you stop in time? If this car slammed the brakes, if you're, are you paying attention? Could you stop in time? I don't know. We got all the way so take a quick look. What is the pattern that we always look for? This big stack of cars and all this driver sees in his mirror is a big open lane. How come they didn't see us? We're right here. How come they didn't see us? Cars can't see us because of inattentional blindness or motion-induced blindness. Inattentional blindness basically says the brain will not see you because the brain doesn't care. The brain, not the person, the brain. It's only looking for things that will kill that person, that brain. So it's looking for other cars, which is 95 plus percent 
of roadway users. So it's looking for the majority. It's not finding you. Okay, there you go, Heavy Harris. I love it. All right, cool. So it's, a, it's an acronym. We got an acronym then. Okay. So inattentional blindness, looking for hazards. The brain itself is looking for hazards, removes what's not or what it perceives is not. Motion-induced blindness is when the background of you is moving, but you kind of stay stationary. So when you're riding on a motorcycle and you're not moving at all, you're just kind of doing this, in the background, the, the, the trees and other roadway uh, users and the mountains are moving, they can't see you. They see the movement. So how do we com uh, combat that with the motion-induced blindness? Present ourselves a little bit more. Just kind of move around, like change lane positions here and there, put yourself in good space cushions. Hey, I can't see very well. This planning, this position for safety is not good. I'm going to move over here. This position's pretty good. Okay, now it's not good anymore. I'm going to move over here. And you're constantly just moving around, finding the best position for safety. So it's not just, hey, I'm finding the position for safety for you, but the fact that you're kind of moving from lane position one to two, two to three, three to one, one to three, and you're doing that because you're trying to find the best area, you're going to be noticed. You're going to be noticed. How hard is it to see a deer standing still versus one running? You'll see the one running. Our eyeballs are attracted to movement. That's how we can defeat a lot of the motion-induced blindness. Inattentional blindness, there's nothing we can do about it. Nothing we can do about it. So we got to be very careful, and the best thing you could do is just position yourself for safety and then look for potential hazards. So this pattern right there where we have a stack of vehicles, what do you want to do when you're stuck behind a stack of vehicles? You want to get over into the nearest lane possible. So try to find these things. Constantly scan, constantly plan, constantly get yourself in a good position for safety. And if all else fails, make sure you're good. Uh, fundamental skills with swerving, braking, and hopefully if, if those don't, or if the, it's not that word, not hopefully. Uh, hopefully it works, but if it doesn't, there we go. You have full gear. Okay. All the way there, got you. Crap like this happens. If you get angry about it, there's nothing you can really do about it. You know, it's just crappy stuff happens. Oh, BJ with a $51 donation to the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. Thank you so much. Not enough focus. I'm gonna pause this real quick and Thomas. Stuart, hey bro, appreciate everything that you are doing. I'm trying to support you in every way possible. No better biker, safety, bloke on YouTube. Keep it up with a $10 donation. Woo! You guys are absolutely insane. And what we're talking about is the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. I appreciate every donation you guys do. It's for a good cause. We are at $5,600 raised. All right, slow one, our rider. Let's go! and small misunderstanding when riding a group usually result in a mess. Okay. So is it a group ride? Green light? Go! Oh. Whoa! Are we turning left or are we going straight? Turning left or are we going straight? How do we combat a miscommunication like that? Well, first off, let's use indicators of where we want to go, right? Let's take a look. Not so we're going to... He's got his indicator. Slow R1 rider. So like right here. Since Indicator. 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 Motostars, you sound you sound sleepy. You, you go take a nap. Okay? I can handle this. I can handle this. Alright, so they're all trying to turn left. Now the one person in the middle wasn't paying attention, isn't gonna turn left and went straight, almost hit somebody. Okay, so you need to have Romero exactly. Hey, go grab yourself a burrito. Burrito. From the crew lounge. Thank you for answering that. You need to pre-plan. You need to pre-plan. So have a pre-ride meeting. Okay, well, if it's just a kind of an impromptu, spontaneous group ride. Hey, everybody. Hey, real quick. Let's go on my Cardo Connect on my phone. Let's go on Cardo Connect on my phone and uh, sync up our Cardo Pack Talk Bolds, Slims, or whatever, free comms. And uh, that way we can chitty chat chat with each other and say, hey, hey, we're turning left. We're turning left. So there's no miscommunication. All right, you could do it on your rock form phone too. So. That's what I'd be doing. That's what I'd be doing. Just double checking. In a group, usually result in a mess. We got an issue right here. And there it is. It's because miscommunication. Miscommunication. 
That's all it is. So bike 72. Oh, we got a little. Yeah, you forgot your uh, your gas cap. Just do it. Just do it. Just be nice. Just, just bloop. Make sure you click it. Get a click. Get, get it. There you go. You gotta get a little tap at the end. You gotta give it a little tap at the end. All right, good rider. Real quick. Bike 72. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. All right, expose moto. Here we go. We're riding around. We're gonna go ahead and pass this Prius because they're annoying. It looks like a Tesla, actually. We're gonna pass them. Whoa, bad spot to pass. You almost hit that cluster of uh, a gaggle of bike bicyclists. Are they a gaggle? What is it? Is it a gaggle? I don't know. So let's get through here. Now remember, we are trying to pass safely. So we need to have a good line of sight when we pass vehicles. And if it's not the right moment, it's not the right moment. Don't do it. So right now it's not a good moment. All right, we're going to do it now. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We weren't really paying attention. We didn't give the bicyclists a lot of room. We gave the car a lot of room. You got to be very careful with that. Okay, you know, 180 pound human being, you're colliding with them at 40 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour, whatever it is that we're doing, 25. Okay, 25. All right, I'll say 25, 25 miles an hour. We, we hit a 180 pound plus another one, plus another one, plus another one at that speed. You're going to have a lot of damage. You're going to have a lot of damage. I want to see some flex seals in the chat. All right, here we go. Not, not really an issue. It's not the best place to pass one. I absolutely agree. All right, moving on. Same rider. Whoa. Happens. Happens all the time. It's a Peloton? A Peloton? I think you guys are making, the, making that up. Alright. So, I don't know if that person was supposed to, to yield. I have a feeling they were because they're merging onto a, a main road. It is a Peloton? Group of bicycle riders. A Peloton. Hey, it is. I like calling them a gaggle, though. Therefore, they shall be called a gaggle. I just like the word. All right, we're moving on. And they didn't slow down. Okay, non issue. Non issue. Just progressive brake pressure roll off the throttle. All right, moving on. Clips show how Tully. this cargo unsecured by the drivers can be for the bikers. All right, moving over position. Oh, good job adapting to that road surface hazard. There was something in the road. Very dangerous. That would have been, that would have messed up your day. All right, moving on to the next thing, side of the vehicle. Another side of the vehicle. Ooh, you see how that line of sight came at you? You see that line of sight? So first of all, this one was good. Okay, so it's pretty simple. He, he saw it ahead of time because we're going highway speeds. You have to. So when he checks his left, he's doing a double check with a head check because the blind spot's checking the mirrors. Hey, it's safe to move over. I'm going to go ahead and move over. Head check, head check, did good. We just moved over one lane position. This was the adaptation. So planning his ride, he positioned for safety. All right, I'm scanning. I'm, I'm staying in yellow stage. Oh, see something. Orange stage now. I located the hazard. PL, right? L. Okay, now I got to adapt. I'm going to check real quick. I got plenty of time. Check, check. Adapt to the hazard, boom, moved on. That is what I want you to do. This was good. This was good. It's almost it. A close call is turned into a non issue because of experience and training. So we're moving on with this. Very good. That would have damaged the car, damaged you. So we're moving on with this. So take a look at this. We, we turn around a corner and we're in an area. It's a commercial area, could be residential, whatever it is. And what's happening is this vehicle is coming out. Hey, typical, right? Right around a corner. You never know what's going to happen. Good thing we're only going 24. We can stand it up, apply some good brake pressure. But just take a look. Do you know what's on the other side of that vehicle? You never know because of a line of sight issue. You assume. You assume there's more road. You assume it's open. You assume you can go. You assume. You don't know for a fact. So when you see something like this, you don't know. Don't gun it as soon as you can. Because you have somebody like that just kind of sneaking around. 
you got to pay attention. You have to know what is around that vehicle. You need to know where you're going. You need to know where your escape path leads to. You can't rush through things. We got side of the vehicle, side of the vehicle, side of the vehicle. Exactly, Sebastian. We got sides of all vehicles here. Did a great job, though. Did a great job. Tully Rankin did an amazing job. Good job. Just be aware of that. All right, riding around having a ton of fun with a blurry speedo. Get that cleaned. It looks a little, a little smudged. Road is terrible. Adapted to that hazard and continued on. Did a good job. Just maybe slow it down a little bit. Thankfully, you're able to navigate that, or I'm sorry, adapt to that. Uh, it wasn't really a swerve. But pay attention. Go ahead and clean off your speedo. It looks a little smudgy. So we're moving on with this. So. We're riding, we're riding, we can see very good. We see something in the middle of the road. We're in lane position two, and this is what I'm talking about. He's able to adapt left or right and able to handle it. So if, if he was in lane position one and the hazard was lane position one, he'd have to swerve to lane position two towards the outside and kind of mess up his line. This one he was able to go in. It's really good. Now, internet, I think it's just, I think it's just he got a little bit of grease on his speedo. He needs to clean that up. There it is, just adapted to it, moved on. Now, after seeing something like that, I'd be like, hmm, that, I take that as an omen, and maybe I should kind of take it easy or be hyper alert. All right, we're riding around, same thing, Tully Rankin, some, same person, another road hazard right there. Hey, did a good job with that road hazard. It was in the opposite lane. Don't know why it's here. Now, this right here is pretty interesting. We're hauling ass on a bicycle. It's a pedal assist bicycle. I want one. But let's take it. Let's think about it. Motorcycle riders, I tell you guys. He was doing. I don't know how much he was doing, man. I was doing like twenty. Leagues. Okay, so he's going like forty. He was, I don't know. Probably like sixty. Sixty. Uh, okay, he said sixty. Probably doing like forty, fifty, I think. Forty, fifty. Okay, what do you want? Anyways, look at him. <laughs> when I tell you guys to wear full gear, going 25, 30, 50, 60, 70 on a motorcycle. When we're this is the new thing now. And look, look at the gear that we're wearing. We're not wearing enough. That's a bicycle helmet. It's not a full face helmet. We got eye protection very good because at that speed, you're not going to be able to see very well. Those don't look like real, those are like little skeleton bone Halloween gloves. That looks like a regular leather jacket. Uh, it could offer some. It could be pleather. Uh, regular shoes, regular pants. We don't have the protection. And here's the thing, people out there are buying these pedal assist bikes and hauling ass on them and maybe souping them up, and there's no education on what type of protection you should get for it. And then there's no manufacturers of, of gear saying, hey, this is specifically designed for pedal assist fast bikes. And then the motorcycle gear isn't very good with the pedal. You, who you, try walking around with motorcycle boots and pants for a long time. Now try think about putting yourself on a mountain bike with motorcycle boots and pants. It's not comfortable. So people won't do it. So there's not enough gear. The gear is not catching up to some of these bikes. And I think that's a huge hazard, a huge danger. And I just want you guys to be safe. So still maintain your smart rider principles when it comes to uh, riding on, on bikes like this. Okay, please, please, please. Awesome. So we got an anonymous donation. <laughs> $20. Woo! Love the hell? teachings. It's out of the saddle for experience. Hey, doing good. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Nothing. Nothing. $20. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's totally legal. I know. That's what's amazing. Yeah. Yes, but I know you can ride just to feet. Look at him. Look at him. Faster acceleration than a, than a motorcycle. It's insane. All right, so we're moving on here. Line of sight issues. Okay, good, good. We're going all over the road. One can say that the rider was very lucky. Uh-oh. So it's definitely a two-way street. Whoa, 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 what happened? Oh, shh. Did he hit the rail? Did he hit the rail? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Oh, we got a mechanism here. Hopefully he's okay. Those rails will not bend. Are they schools? Standing. That's good. That's good. That left arm looks kind of destroyed. Guys, if it could do that to your bike, imagine what it can do to your body. 
If it's going to do that to your bike, imagine what it's going to do to your flesh and bone. That's stronger than your body. Destroyed it. So I'm If it can do that to your bike, I'm going to say it again. If it can do it to your bike, imagine what it can do to your body. Coco, it will slice you in half. I've seen it. Why I do this, everybody? I've seen stupid stuff like this. Aren't it schools? So why is his shirt? You can see it on his arm. You can see his bare skin right here. Why is his shirt up? Probably injured that side and he's checking it. Okay. The fact that he's walking wounded, very good. Very good. I like the fact that he's walking wounded. It means he's able to do it. But take a look at this. Look at the look at the road. Look where he hit. Okay. So that's where you have the debris all messed up. That thing didn't get damaged. That didn't get damaged. That didn't get damaged. If you low side. If you low side into this and hit that at any speed, one piece of you is going that way, one piece of you is going that way. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful, guys. The only thing that's gonna, that gear's not gonna save you, by the way. Gear's not gonna save you right here. The only thing that's gonna save you is good situational awareness and good fundamental skills and taking care of your bike because maybe it's a bike malfunction. So look at the bike. Look how far it went. Look where he went. Look how far he went. He went over. Or he went through. I think he went underneath the rail. That's a KTM. That thing's done, dude. It's done. So I'm... Be very careful, everybody. Very careful. Please. All right. All right, here we go. Straw Dragon, here we go. We're riding right here. Good space cushion. See the line of sight, how we're off to the side of the vehicle, even though we're in lane position two. Now it kind of got taken away. Watch out for this vehicle. Watch out. He's, he might do it to you. Now, why do you think... It was a weird intersection, but why do you think that car did that? Why do you think the car did that? So we're riding around. I think the car up front, and I think that left lane is being restricted by the red light, and the far right lane can keep going. Um, I have a feeling this person wanted to get into that lane, didn't check their blind spots, but it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Why didn't they see that car? They, they merged over and didn't see the car. They never see us as motorcycle riders. How come they could not see the bright red car right next to them? Because people are idiots. People aren't paying attention. People aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. People aren't looking where hazards could jump out at them. So if we can see this and witness this in front of us, we need to be extra careful for us because we are at higher vulnerability and people just don't see us anyways. Could be a new driver too. So think about that, TJ Clark. Thank you so much. That's the whole point of an after-action review, especially with the DDF and crew. I love it. Woo! Love it. Hey, how you doing, Mike Hoyer? Uh, the, the thing is, if it's a new rider or a new driver, think about it. So much stuff is going on that, oh, crap, oh, crap. I, 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 there's like t a checklist of things I'm supposed to do, but brain can't handle it because I'm new. And I'm, I'm really focused on trying to drive, and I do this. Think about that. How many times, think about when you first started riding on the road, even though you're an adult, even though you've been driving. So those of you that have driving experience and then you became motorcycle riders, the first time you rode a motorcycle, you're like, R -r -r being on the road is, is scary. Being on the road is like, there's so much going on. Like, I forgot how to get home. I forgot where to go. And I've lived in this town for so long. And I, I don't even remember how. That's because your brain literally is trying to focus on one thing and one thing only, and that is to maneuver that motorcycle, maneuver that car, and your brain just can't handle all the other input that, it's, that you're giving it. So it's trying its best. So be very careful around new riders, 
and new drivers. And if you're a new rider, understand that that is a reality. So take it easy. That's why I tell people to go into neighborhoods where there's less inputs, less hazards, but you can still practice on street stuff. And then when you feel comfortable there, move on to more surface streets, then move on to city streets, then move on to interstates and all those different things. So that's what I, I try to uh, explain. So thank you, TJ, for bringing that up. Um, it, it happens to everybody. It happens to everybody. I lived in Yuma for, for 21 years at the time. Uh, I lived in there 30 years, but 21 years or 20 years, and I started driving the ambulance for the first time. And I, li- and I was driving in Yuma for five plus years at, by then. And it felt like I forgot how to get from point A to point B because I was so focused on not crashing the ambulance. It, it went away quickly, but it, it's so crazy how you feel that way. So don't be scared. Don't be worried if that's how you feel. If you feel it, move off onto uh, an easier road until you get that confidence back up. But take a look at this. Easily could have happened to you. It's okay. It's okay. All right, moving over here. You're going to turn left. Very good. All right, sides of the vehicles. Just kind of cruise a little bit. Relax. There you go. Handle it. Move on. Don't let them in. Go on with your day. Non-issue. All right, non-issue. All right. My eyes are hurting. What happened? I like his shirt. It says, woo. Oh, birdie. Hey, that happens all the time. Hey, another birdie. Or is that the same one? Anyway, so we're going on with this one. We're switching lanes. Okay, good line of sight. Looks like we're getting closer. Watch out. Blind spot, blind spot, blind spot. Good job applying progressive brake pressures. Get yourself out of there. That's a bad line of sight. Bad position for safety. Give yourself a better space cushion. So what happened here was we were in the blind spot. Look at on the far right. Look on the far right. We're in the blind spot. We're going to switch lanes. And I don't know why they switched lanes, but we're in their blind spot, so they just they just did it and either didn't look or didn't check their blind spot. Okay, now we're moving on to this one. And we got a car coming here, so that means this vehicle is going to slow down. Th- this is normal? I don't know. Do we just not have enough? Okay. All right, so here we go. Vehicle's coming in. This person's got to slow down, so we should be slowing down too because we recognize and we can see ahead. And that's it. Okay, non-issue, man. Non-issue. Moving on to this one. And tight turn from a stop. We didn't go... uh, we We didn't do good counterbalancing. Not a good friction clutch control. Maybe even a little bit of rear brake. We weren't paying attention. Just a little bit too slow. A little newbie mistake here. A little newbie mistake. Practice your tight turns. We have all that training on motorcycle training concepts. That's what it looks like. It happens. Thankfully, nothing bad truly happened to this rider. <laughs> all right, so we're riding through here. Cool Breeze rider, how you doing, man? <laughs> Lane filtering in California, not an issue. She's smiling. Hey, she's smiling at you. I don't... She's all nervous. She's like, look at all these bikers. All right, so moving on. Does she just, like, not know what to do, or? In the end, I hope you think... What is... What is... What are we going to do with that, Moto Stars? What are we going to do with that? Are we getting to a point where there's like no more close calls and crashes? Hey, I'm happy. I'm happy about that. I'm happy about that. All right. It's good that we had we don't have any. Chris Crowley, sorry, not much better next time with a ten dollar donation to the distinguished gentleman's right. Hey, ten dollars is more than than a lot of people have been doing. A lot more than a lot of people are doing. It's better than zero. I'm happy about that. Thank you so much. Hey, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be heading into the uh, the office real soon. But remember, guys, we just announced the gear giveaway winners on Patreon, uh, and we and we announced them at the beginning of the stream. So if you want to become a member, please do so. Click the link in the uh, Chitty Chat chat right now and uh, become a patron. Okay, 
pretty soon we're going to be moving on to the Motorcycle Training Concepts website. But until then, whew, come with me to the lounge. Now we're, we're going to work on this. We're going to work on, we're going to work on the lounge. We're going to work on getting some new, uh, new equipment in here. I don't know. Do you guys like playing foosball? Do you guys like playing, uh, billiards? I know it's not billiards, it's pool. We, we play pool here. Billiards is a little bit too strict for me. I don't like that. Uh, let me know what it is that you guys like. Let me just, you guys know. I'm having a stroke here, everybody. Uh, it's a long day, long week. We do this every Tuesday and Thursday at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Uh, but we're going to be heading into, you know, I don't know if I want to go in the office. Do you guys want to go in the office or the my room, my dorm room? What do you guys want to do? We're going to hang out for a little bit. We're going to have a chitty chat chat. We're going to have some music playing. Just some nice, chill, lo-fi music. What do you guys want? Do you guys, do you guys want to go in uh, my, my dorm room or do you want to go in my office? Let me know in the chat. What do you guys, what do you guys want? What do you guys want? The bar? Uh, we don't have a bar. We just have uh, nice, easy drinks with some uh, Diet Mountain Dews and, and some, some waters. Uh, the Cervezas. Hey, hey, hey. Got some in the, uh, my dorm room. Dance club, class. Oh. All right, I'm going to go where I want to go then. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need to clean it up a little bit. I need to clean it up a little bit. I need to get... Where'd my chair go? Where'd my chair go? Well, before I... I got to get my chair. I got to get my chair. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and listen to some music. Let's go ahead and listen to some music. Now, what we do here is we kind of just hang out and we talk about uh, we talk about what we're learning, what we're doing, how we're handling things. Can you guys hear it? Yeah. Okay. Let me go get my chair. Was it one second? The bed? Uh, I, I, it's a Murphy bed. I moved it up. I moved it up. Here, once, one second. Can uh, one of you guys uh, pick it up for me? There you go. Was... These rookies gotten better. Rookies got a little bit better. Yeah. All right, so we're, uh, whatever happened to the garage, we're remodeling it right now, Prodigal. We're remodeling it. Um, we don't have any room for, for other motorcycles right now. Uh, we're remodeling a lot of stuff here at the firehouse. Uh, the kettlebell, it's, uh, it, it looks quite small, but there's a Neutron Star uh, inside, so it's actually quite heavy. Uh... What CC? I heard saw somebody somebody say something about a, about a CC bike. Uh, one sec. Uh, how, okay. Uh, Demon. How, hey, chat. How does one decide what C CC bike to get as his first bike? It all depends on what you can do with your hands and your feet and how confident you are. Uh, some places limit it by you know license level. Uh, I think a an amazing starter bike is around 300 CCs, but I know a lot of people can handle much more as a first bike. It all depends on you, but a 300cc bike, you're going to have a ton of fun. If you decide to upgrade later, keep that 300cc bike if you can, and you're just going to have a lot of fun putting on that thing around. I mean, having a high cc bike is fun and all, but you never utilize all of it, and it's very expensive just to even keep it. So, anyways, where'd the bed come from? It's the Murphy bed, right here, little Murphy bed. I like it. I like to keep it nice and neat. Well, I was thinking about Spider-Man. Or Power Ranger, but I, I don't know. 
plan is an acronym. All right, Joseph, a little late in class. Maybe you're watching it from back, back there, but I pre acronym. Awesome. Teach on a 750 shadow. It's easy to ride. looks good. My 13 year old daughter can handle it. Yeah. See, it, it all depends on what it is you can do. Does height and weight factor in on the CC bike? You get to not too much, not too much. Um, uh, gross vehicle weight restrictions could apply to some of these things, the, but it, it, I wouldn't worry too much. It's a motor with two wheels. It has enough power to get you where you need to go. Um, if you get like a 125, like a Grom, uh, it, it also depends on what you want to do. So, I mean, if you want to ride interstate miles, a Grom's not going to handle that very well. So you have to also think about, okay, what's good enough for me at my skill level, but then also what do I want to do with it? And I have to match it to that because you can always increase your skill level. You're not going to be able to increase the CCs on a bike just like you can increase your skill level. Yeah, damage case. You know, egotistical guys start talking crap, and that's not what we do here on the DDFM crew. By the way, we have a Discord server, which is a chat room. It's a big chat room. we got 6,000 plus people in it, and we don't do that to our members. We don't talk crap. We just enjoy the fact that you're on two wheels, having a good time, doing your thing. Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much. Would not worry too much about it. So join the Discord. It's, it's free. Trevs, it's all good. You checked in? Hey. Woo. Good that you checked in. Knees on knees in the breeze. Pizza or tacos for dinner? Uh I'm actually like really full. I would love you know what I I, I feel like ahi tuna salad. Like an ahi tuna steak, maybe a little little chopped up a little bit. On, on a nice salad with uh, crispy onion, uh, maybe a little bit of uh, dried um, raspberries, a little bit of crunch, a little bit of sweetness, peppercorns. I don't know. Only Dan's? I don't know. We're not going to do that. Who won the gift cards? We have third place, Allen Hall. Second place, Burgundy. First place, Domini King. I'll be sending emails out real soon to those people. Some pokey? I don't know about pokey. I don't want to. I don't want to do raw. I, I want it. I mean, with an ahi tuna steak, you're literally cooking each side for like 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Um, but that's what I would want to do. I, I've had pokey before. Uh, Nikki loves pokey. Woo! She loves it. I had it, and it, it just it was too raw, too. I like sushi and and and, and everything, um, and the raw fish on it. I think I just might need to have a little bit, like a sliver. I can't do like cubes. I can't do cubes of it. Ryan, woo, how you doing? Uh, should you have brought a pencil, AJ? No, 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 no. AJ. Um, can can a hey, can a rookie get AJ a pencil? We got tons of pencils. We got tons of pencils. Uh, they do cost a lot. Lumber is a lot more now, so each pencil is going to cost you $20, okay? It's part of being a member. It's part of being a member. You got to buy the pencils, too. Um, my first bike is, uh, is waiting on the parking lot for me to pass my class and exam end of June. Whoa, June! And it's an older V-Star 650. Lots of people told me it was too small, but I like it. Hey, who cares? Moto Dan Madness stars? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. I, uh, Yellowfin's good. Mm. Woo-wee. Sean, it's all good. Um, Clean my room? I know, it's a little bit of a mess. Did we sell Nikki's bike, Stacy? Yes, we did. Uh, we sold it just because it wasn't being used. And here's the thing, everybody, and I want you guys to, to hear this. And let me pause the music. Let me pause the music. When it comes to motorcycles, when it comes to anything you do, if it's not, if what you're doing is not making you happy or what you're doing uh, could bring value by getting rid of it, then do that. So for motorcycling, she absolutely loved doing it. She loved learning. She loved being a part of it. 
And then for a while, especially during 2020, uh, didn't use it, but then got into gardening and got into bird watching, got into volunteering at, at, a, at a hospital. And so new passions came up. So we're like, you know, why do we have a motorcycle sitting there that we could sell, get that money, and then we can really, you know, uh, fund, uh, fund the, uh, the gardening and the, the bird watching and all these different things. So it's like, let's just sell it. Let's get rid of it because this is your new passion. Let's make that happen. So motorcycles aren't the end of the world. You know, it's not once you do it, you have to stick with it. No, 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 no. Get rid of it if you don't want to do it. Do something else that makes you happy. So she's doing something right now that's making her extremely happy, and we don't have another motorcycle, so I don't have to pay insurance on it. It was already paid off. I don't have to pay insurance on it. I don't have to do nothing. I don't have to have it in the garage. And she gets all the money, so she's having a good time with it. She's able to spend it how she wants to spend it now, and it's bringing her value there. So, yeah, bird watching. Erica, she loves bird watching. Loves it. I bought her binoculars, uh, like a $100 pair of binoculars. Um, you know, she's got books. So she's constantly looking at birds. I'm always finding new birds, and I'm learning about them too. So I'm like, that's a red-tailed hawk right there. Hey, whoa, shit, they just swooped down and got a pigeon. You know, we were looking at uh, hooded orioles. We're, we're, there's just so many different things. It's really cool. It's really cool. Yeah, Jared, I like to think of it that way too. It's dinosaur watching. <laughs> um, hey, Hal G. Enjoying all the great content. Been enjoying learning class. A, hey, thank you for being here, Hal. Wanted to get your opinion uh, from Eli. I have a good friend who is thinking of getting into motorcycles other than getting him to take the MSF course. What advice or pointers can I give him? Uh, here's the thing. Motorcycles, anything at, traveling faster than you can run is dangerous or can be very dangerous. Therefore, you need the training. You really need to train like your life depends on it. Treat it like it's something that, that it, you're, you're, it's self-defense classes against gravity and inertia. You need to take these self-defense classes. You don't go out and you don't go to you know, Somalia or, or wherever, you know, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan right now, just walk around without having protection, right? Without training, right? You don't go into dangerous areas without maybe, you know, packing uh, a gun or, or even having self-defense classes. So if you're going to get on a motorcycle, why don't you take some self-defense classes against the typical hazards out there like inertia, gravity, because those want to attack you. I have no idea why I'm saying it like that, but I'm having fun with it. Now, uh, the main thing is, is you need to have training. You just need to have training because there's, there's so many different things out there that will kill you on a motorcycle or hurt you on a motorcycle, and you want to enjoy it. So enjoy it by being as safe as possible. So you can enjoy it as long as you possibly can. Yeah, we have a Discord, everybody. Woo! MSF class is probably, and here's the thing, if you, if you think of it from a financial standpoint, if you don't know if you want to get into motorcycle riding and you're wanting to buy a bike, which costs thousands of dollars, and then you have to get gear that costs hundreds of dollars. How about you just dip your toes in and do a short little trial run and take an MSF class where you max spend 350 bucks, max, because I know some places are like 100 bucks or free, and you get a motorcycle to play around on for two days. You get gear provided to you, the minimum amount of gear, and then... For after that, you could make a decision if you want to really do it. And that's probably the best thing you could do. And then on top of that, if you pass, you get your endorsement, so you can go straight into it if you wanted. Jarrett, you like the, the poll I did on advanced moto courses? That was insane, huh? Not a lot of people have taken advanced classes. And I want, I want everyone to take advanced classes. But I, I see why. I definitely see why people don't do it. It's just, it costs too much. Or there's nothing available. We're going to work on that. Which, by the way, everybody, hey, just quick heads up. Mother's Day. Mother's Day is Sunday. You guys get your stuff for your mother? Your wife? That's a mother? Anybody? Just a quick reminder, crew. Hey, crew, come on. I'm trying to help you out here. Don't get, don't get messed up. Don't, don't, don't show up empty-handed. Don't be coming home from the gas station with one of those crappy little plastic 
roses in a little sleeve of plastic. No, 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 no. No. Just helping you out. Yep, Muppet. Exactly. And MSF makes you a better driver in your car, too. What's the like ratio? By the way, everybody, you got to sign in. Sign into class. Click that like button. Click that like button. Cornell, you got it taken care of. Good. I, I have it. I, I bought all the materials. I'm building her a, uh, uh, a... I can't even think of the name. A bird feeding stand. So, like, a, uh, shoot. I, I wish I could show you the diagram. I'm building it myself with a 4x4 and with some wood. Um, I'm building it, so I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it uh, tomorrow and then this weekend. You got stain and everything. It's going to be nice, custom. She got one right now, and it's, like, flimsy. It's a bird... F it's a bird feeder. Not just a pole. Let's see if I can find one. I'm making it custom. I'm making it custom. Like, it's going to be... I got to get on it, though. I got to get on it. I'm trying to, there's nothing here that, like, I'm making it, like, legit custom for her. There's, like, nothing, like, I, I already drew out the plans. I made the plans myself. Um, and I got all the wood for it. A lot of 90-degree angles. There's not, I can't find anything. Can't find anything. But it's going to look nice. Yeah, handmade gifts are the best. Cause it's cause because Jared or not Jared, uh Ryan, it's like cause you know time was having to put into it, you know. Frank, your brother gave you a 2017 Honda CBR 300 r and I'm still learning a lot of the basics of the motorcycle around. I spent hours and hours watching your videos and they've been as well helpful. Thank you, Dad. Hey Frank. I'm so happy I could help you. Oh, Sean, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm not a carpenter, Cornell. Uh, I do a little woodworking on the side. See, that's the thing, everybody. Like, find out what is a is a passion for you. You know, there's motorcycle riding, and this this kind of kind of to go back. Hey, Ryan. Hey, <laughs> senior crew. Woo! Senior crew members get a nice dorm room. Uh, not like this. You guys still have to share your. I get my own bathroom. Chiefs get this. So area code. Uh, you got yours. I mean, everybody else got theirs. So, <clears throat> anyways. Uh, I'm not a carpenter. So what I was trying to get at is, uh, I used to put all my eggs in one basket when it comes to, uh, like my escape, my mental health escape. So I know a lot of you guys and a lot of you people, I, I keep saying guys, but I mean the crew, a lot of the crew, um, <clears throat> a lot of the crew ride motorcycles to, to kind of zone into the motorcycle, to not think about the anxiety and depression and everything. So that's what I used to do. And I, and I, for motorcycles, like that was my thing. But then there's days that you can't ride. You know, it's, there's times you can't ride. So it's like, what do you do? You know, maybe you're working on the bike, you can't ride, you get agitated a lot. Well, working out's another thing you could definitely do. It's a healthy escape. But then for me, I've always enjoyed building something. And I would, I, and it kind of came out of necessity. I didn't have a lot of money. And I needed like a table, for instance, for uh, like the dining room table. So it's like I could spend hundreds of dollars on a table or I could spend like $200 on the wood for the table and then like $100 on a tool. I'm like, I'll do that. And so I save money, but then I could build more in the future uh, with these tools I keep buying. So I, throughout the years, I've gotten enough tools, you know, like a miter saw, like a uh, different, like an actual miter saw. I got um, enough drills, drill bits, n enough blades, circular saws, um, I, I mean, I got, I got a lot. So now it's like, okay, I built it up over the years. So all I need is wood at this point, And then maybe some screws here and there and some wood glue and, and all that stuff. So now it's just like, I can dedicate and zone in on those things and plan it and, and learn a different tool to trade. So now I got two things, three things, four things, five things that if one thing isn't helping me, I move on to the next thing. If that thing I can't do, cause it's so hot. You know, summertime's coming. I can't do a lot of woodworking. And also, motorcycle riding is freaking hot. I can go to the gym and work out. I can go bird watching now with my wife. I can go for walks in the evening and in the, in the morning. 
Um, I do that every day. Uh, by the way, uh, last yesterday when I went walking, giant ass diamondback rattlesnake. My dog walked right by the rattlesnake. Seriously, less than a foot away from it. I had her off leash. It was it was in a little uh, washway, and I've done it for years. Yeah, complacent, complacent. I still scanned everything. I'm still constantly scanning, but it got complacent. You know, you never know. A thousand times walked it, never had an issue. S- saw it when I was getting myself closer because she was ahead of me. My son was with me, and I, f- I was like, oh, shit. And I freaked out, and I stopped him, put my arm out, and I stopped us. And that thing was just, like, just coiled up, didn't, didn't do anything, just let my dog walk by. And I'm like, oh, we got lucky. We got lucky. Um, it had 10, 10 little rattles. So I kind of looked it up and it said like every two to three, uh, little rattle is like a year. So that thing was like five, four to five years old, but that thing was huge. I got pictures of it. I don't know if you guys can see it. Look at that thing. And then that's where I was like walking. I was walking down there. I'm not your dad, Eli. So I was walking, I was walking down that path, and she walked right by. You can't even see it, right? I was down there. I jumped up because I got scared. I jumped like a little kitty cat. Jumped up. Put my dog up there. But I was walking down there. She walked right by it. Okay, you can see it a little bit better now. That's the that's the bad boy right there. It's a danger noodle. Yeah, Ben. Woo! And I went walking with my son. So we're in the parking lot. Testing out a new cone system. See the big orange cones? You see the yellow thing on the bottom? See the yellow thing on the bottom? I'm testing out the um, this new system. Testing out the new system. Yeah, I just didn't see it. It was like super late. Double checking everything. It is a thick boy. Uh, Demon, so the chat, I don't, uh, I'd have to figure out. It takes a little bit. You have to give it, I think it's a 10-minute timer. You have to give it a 10 minute. It's a 10-minute timer thing. Uh, you have to uh, add in your phone number to it. Um, and you should be able to get in. You should be able to get in. I have to double check the terms and everything. I was white stage sub. Yep. I was. I was. Yeah, just give it a little bit of time. It's because we try to prevent spam and trolls. Um, we're, we're a partnered, uh, we're a Discord partnered server. So we have to have certain things in, in place uh, for that. Yep. You find snakes all the time. All the time. It just, it's just it's that time of the year, too. I've, I've been thinking about it. Um, it's super hot out, so they come out, and they find some, uh, some shade, and then when it gets dark, they kind of go home. So, like, right at dusk, right... Right when in the evening and and then at dawn, uh, you got to be real careful. And I've been thinking about it for two weeks now. It's like I'm not walking in the desert now at this time because I, I, I walk in the morning and the evening uh, to kind of separate uh, work and home. I treat my walks like I'm walking to work in the morning or I'm, uh, I'm sorry, driving to work in the morning or driving home from work. 
So I go for a walk after class like this, and then I go for a walk first thing in the morning. It helps out with my mental health. especially it, Guys, if you're working from home, you need to have this separation of work and home life. And it is extremely hard. I'm not saying I'm doing great. Uh, but the thing is, uh, walking definitely helps out. I know I'm going to get it trimmed. I'm getting it trimmed. I'm going to get shaped. That's, I've been letting it grow out like crazy. You see on the sides how it's like kind of poofy? I typically fade it in. Yeah, tar snakes. Woo -wee. Yeah, it's hard, Rabu. Rabu. No, I'll let it grow out. I think it's slowed down in growth because a lot of dead ends, you know, or split ends. Let's see if I can. Ow. You can't see it, but this is how long it is off my chin. I got a little tape measure. Six inches. <laughs> Off the chin, it's six inches. Easily. Half a foot. I had a 2012 Nightster, Charles. How are you liking your 2011? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna cut off maybe half an inch. Yeah, we might square it off. We're gonna square it off. We're gonna make it look good. Um, I do like. I want to keep the mustache. Wow! 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 I look like a muppet. I'm a muppet. Muppet man. All right. Do I? Why do I have a ruler by the bed? Because oh, I'm constantly, I'm constantly a Muppet fan forever. Hey, how you doing? I'm a Muppet man. Uh, I I like measure for shipping. It's like okay, so I remember it's three and a half by by two. You know, it's a whatever. Stop. What? Do you, stop insinuating. Jeez. She's going on about my beard. What damage case? Damage cases, girlfriend. What should I do? What should I do? I just want to shape it a little bit. It like connects to my chest hair. There's nothing I could do. It's just so much testosterone flowing through my body. <sighs> oh, we don't have music. We've got to get the music playing. Come on. Why didn't anybody say anything? Why didn't you say anything? Just leave the mustache and trim it down square. Use a hairdryer to blow it out first. Uh, yeah, okay. I blow it out every time I get out of the shower. This is what it looks like after a shower, after I blow it out. Uh, the Rebel 1100 DCT has his first bike. It all depends on the, on his skill level. Uh, the Rebel 1100, the Rebel base, like the 300, 500, 1100, very low seat height, easy to flat foot. Uh, mid controls are really good for a beginner because you could flat foot and then easily get them on and flat foot. Easily get You can constantly do that. Um, so that's really good. DCT is going to make it to where you don't have to shift. So that's really good. 
uh, for beginner, and it's got a lot of power, and it's going to do everything you want to do, so you have to realize it's got a lot of power, though. So throttle control is going to be the biggest thing here. Throttle control is going to be the biggest thing here. Be very careful with that. Square it off from the mustache down and trim the sides. Yeah, I need to trim the sides. It's it's not how it should be. It should be, you know, like squared up. I let it, I literally let it grow out or grow out for the barber. I let it grow out for the barber. TJ Clark, it's after two months, it's not this long. This is this is uh three weeks. I have to constantly trim it. This is three weeks right here. No lie, no cap. That's what the kids say, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of power. 1100 is a lot of power. Lots of power. Just double checking on a few things. Forty six years old. I think that's. <laughs> I have no hair up here. It's it's kind of cut. You can see. I I let it grow out a little bit. I need to trim it. I at least have a good shaped head. You know what I'm saying? Uh, do I use beard products? No. Uh, no, I do not. I just blow dry it after a shower. Keep it nice and dry. That's the biggest thing, keeping your skin dry underneath. Not like like itchy dry, but um, keeping the skin dry after a shower. You don't want mo a lot of moisture after a shower, and that's how you get like fungus and and nasty stuff. Uh, I wash it every three to four days uh, with shampoo that uh, was given to me by my doctor, and it's basically like head and shoulders for your beard. How do you grow? How did you grow? Did you outgrow your hairline? Yeah. So everything just. From here, just started shifting lower and lower and lower and lower, and now it's just here. That's just, I don't know how that works. Hey, Matt. Would it be a good idea to get Ninja 300 or 400's first motorcycle before I get a car? I'm just about 18. Uh, cars are so nice, Burke. You might want to get a car. Cars are really nice. If you can afford a car and a motorcycle and you're like, which would, should I get first? I really like the fact that you could do so much with a car. Um, I mean, you could passengers, you can carry stuff. Motorcycles, I mean, they're fun. You could probably get away with a motorcycle. Go for a ride, Gregory. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, they know. I mean, it's like, Think about it. Would, would you want to ride a bicycle or drive a car? If it's drive a car. Okay, cool. You want to drive a car. Do you want to ride a bicycle with a motor so you don't have to pedal or drive a car? That's that's pretty much it. Am I a ZZ Top fan? Uh, nah, nah, I'll listen to him. I don't, I'm, I'm not dying to hear him. Uh, how necessary do you think ABS is on a first bike for a newbie? I'm itching to get a bike now. I've completed the MSF, but I can't find the specific bike I want with ABS anywhere nearby. Zick, I think it's an amazing, like one of the best things you can get for a new rider or even as an older rider, it's a safety net. If you can't find it for your model, just remember you got to you gotta fill in that skill with good progressive brake pressure. So practice, 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 so you never uh, panic brake. That's the biggest thing. ABS is going to help you out with panic braking or applying too much uh, when traction isn't there. I highly recommend ABS for anybody, for any time, any experience level. Combined brakes like a gold wing. I don't like combined because once you apply any brake pressure, the weight transfers to the front wheel and then now you're just applying wasted movement and wasted energy to that rear wheel with the brake, the combined. Um, but the thing is, like, with a gold wing, there's so much weight and it's so low, it's probably, it's like a 50-50 uh, braking, you know, basically. So that might be a good case, uh, use case for it, but um, 
once that weight transfer to that front tire, you want more power, brake power to that front tire. But I mean, Honda Gold Wings, I mean, they got the technology, so I'm pretty sure there's a reason why they do it. Like back in the day, a lot of a lot of bikes were, com uh, not a lot of bikes, but there were more combined um, braking power and it didn't work for every kind of bike. There's a reason why you don't see them very often. Then again, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, so yeah, Ben, it's yeah, 30 to 40 percent it prevents. Uh, because a lot of the problems are the panic brakes. Thousand mile road trip from LA to San Francisco and back, Jerem. Woo! Used a lot of your, the tips and techniques from this channel. Hey, I'm glad. I'm glad. Did it? Did it help? Like, does it? Does it? Like, how? What I'm trying to get at is, I hope you didn't have to use swerving or braking. I'm. I'm hoping it. It. I, and I also don't want to make you more anxious. You know what I mean? I want you to get to a point where it's like, I saw this, I saw this, now it's normal, everything's fine, I can ride and enjoy it, fine, 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 fine. Uh, and, you're, and you're enjoying it. Lots of road hazards, like U-turns went through rain and around Big Sur. And Okay, good, good. So that you're able to, you're, ain't no thing, ain't no thing, there it is. All right, cool, cool, cool. I don't want to cause people to get anxiety with the color code chart and being... A little paranoid and going to orange stage, you know, in intersections and curves. I just want people to understand and be aware. And then the more you do it, it's like, oh, this is easy. You know, orange stage is like just natural coming up. You know what I mean? Hear your voice of reason on the road, especially when someone is being a dumb dumb. Hey, yep, brand bando joke. Got to you got to be careful around them. Thirty-eight years and your class has still allowed me to learn and get better. Never stop learning. T.J. Clark, woo! You've been riding longer than I've been alive. Damn. How you guys doing? Good, Ryan. I'm glad. I'm glad. You guys, we had some amazing donations. We had the biggest donation ever uh, this month, or not this month, this year for the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride with five hundred. And ten dollars from Michael White, uh, great cause, great everything. Um, I gotta get going. Uh, I gotta, I gotta do dad stuff. Uh, you know. And here's the thing: I, I took uh, Tuesday off for mental health stuff. Um, I just was sleepy, sleepy all day. Uh, back's been hurting. Feels a little bit better now. Uh, but I just want you guys to understand. You know, the distinguished gentleman's right. The reason why we're raising money is for men's mental health and prostate cancer research, statistical cancer research, and uh, near and dear to my heart, we've raised eighteen thousand two hundred fifteen dollars in eight events. Um, this this year is fifty six hundred dollars so far. So it's a huge portion of it, huge portion of it. Uh, but don't be don't be afraid to, you know, to to say what you need and do what you need to do. Um, but we have a discord server and there is a mental health section on that discord server. So if you just need a chitty chat, chat with people and I <laughs> pyro, I, <laughs> I'm going to download that. Um, <laughs> this is on the discord server. This is the discord server right here. Um, let's go ahead and turn off that. Yeah, the pyro. I knew somebody was gonna take a picture. That's kind of why I did that. Uh, but we have a mental health spot right here. I don't. I don't show that on stream. I don't. We delete it every every so often uh, because I know a lot of stuff is said in the moment, and it's not what was meant. And so we delete it. We just do a clean wipe every so often. But we do have a, a crew lounge right here. We have a crew lounge right here. So this is where all crew members can go and hang out and honorary members. Uh, so if you are a YouTube member or a Patreon member, you get access to that. Uh, but yeah, we have the lounge right here, uh, having a good time. You know, everyone's just chit-chatting. Uh, these are all the members right there on the far right. A lot of patrons, a lot of honorary members that I like to, to give honorary status to. 
you can see, you know, Rain and staff member. These are all the chiefs, assistant chiefs. There's area code right there. Uh, and there's me at the tippy, tippity, top, 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 top. But yeah, so we, if you want to join the Discord, the Discord's absolutely free. Just some extra stuff if you are a member or a patron member. But guys, I got to get going. I got to get going. I got to get going. I'll be seeing you next week. We got some cool things. We're probably going to put these up on the store uh, this weekend. So stay tuned for MotorcycleTrainingConcepts.com. But I'll be seeing you guys later. Yeah, 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 yeah.